Hello and welcome to the Discover History YouTube channel and today we are going to be looking at the earliest bows in existence and this is really because someone asked us to look at archery in a little bit more detail. Now if you go into our playlist you will see uh, under military history and social history I've put the same video and that was the history in a way a whistle stop tour uh, or the archaeology of archery and in a way this will continue from there because it can be used or bows can be used as a military weapon but you also have to remember is long long ago bows were also used for hunting for meat for example so it's a social and military thing so if you remember when I took a look at some of the uh, books on the history of archery um, I showed you archaeology or archaeology of archery and it's a fascinating book and it shows examples of the earliest bows that we have in Britain and here you will see uh, an illustration of fragments of bow and these are bows really from the period of the late stone age so the new stone age as it's often referred to the neolithic period and that's down to the fact that we change our habits in hunting so if you go back right to let's say the paleolithic the early stone age uh, the old stone age we were hunting usually with a spear that was our general tool of choice and that was usually a piece of wood uh, with a carved point on it and that was heated in the fire to harden it and we would run around chasing animals with that spear maybe not actually throwing the thing more likely we were thrusting the thing into the animal if we were good enough to get close enough to do that so that's what we generally did and that is quite a dangerous way of hunting because you have to get close to the animal so you may miss the animal altogether in other words you may scare it off because you're so close the other thing is you're likely to get injured no matter what the animal is be it an aurochs which is a giant cow uh, maybe a reindeer uh, or even something like a woolly mammoth when you get that close to those sort of animals you are likely to get either injured or die and in an age without the nhs in an age without proper medicine you are likely to be a burden on your tribe and possibly even die several weeks later of some form of infection so getting close to an animal is quite a dangerous thing so as time went by in particular late part of the mesolithic the middle stone age and definitely into the neolithic we suddenly see archaeologically uh, bows being used and as i showed you in that book on archaeology uh, or archery in archaeology uh, we have evidence for these bows and what I've got here is the oldest bow that I use and it's very difficult to get on the camera fully so I will hold it closer to the lens so you will see the details as we go so this is often referred to as a south bow um, it's also referred to as a flat bow purely because the limbs of it which are these plates here and here are relatively flat so it's the earliest type of bow that we have so there we have the lower limb shall we say and the upper limb is just the same so it's very very wide it's very very broad which actually makes it quite strong and it's very very thin there is no real shape into it really there are two rectangles really and in the center is the really hard thick part which sits in your hand and hopefully you can see that from the video now we know they often decorated these limbs and they were often decorated by gluing uh, using things like fish scale glue or rabbit glue um, more rawhide shall we say really or skins attached to there or even sinews where it would be bound around that would give decoration and we've seen that in the archaeological record but the ends of the limbs, as you can see, have actually been strengthened here and also at the other end using sinew. So this is actually taken from an animal's ligaments, basically, and it's been glued and bound on. And as I said, they were using all sorts of glues, including uh, glue created by boiling fish scale and also glue 
that's been created by using rabbit skin specifically and that would strengthen those limbs the edges of the limbs so that is a fat flat flat bow or a south bow the actual string of the bow which is obviously also very very important here is actually been made out of cordage or fibers and the best fibers you can use are things such as stinging nettles for example the actual uh, stem of the stinging nettle is very fibrous and these can be plaited into strings for using on the bow or also animal sinew again was often used for the string now the problem with those things is when they get very very wet they can actually stretch and they can actually break so it's the most dangerous part of the bow itself really the bow itself the wood which is usually made of things like elm uh, hazel or ash is actually the very strong bit it's the string that's the weak point in the manufacture of bows and like I said the invention of the bow it really shall we say the neolithic generally but possibly even in the mesolithic allowed people to hunt at a greater distance which actually makes it much safer you can stalk an animal you don't have to get too close and scare it off wasting a lot of energy you can stalk at a distance and when you've got a direct line with that animal you can shoot that animal for food remember and the animal will be brought down very very easily it takes practice, but it is, generally speaking, much safer than going up to an animal and poking it with a stick, which is the old way. Now, the only thing that we haven't talked about is what they were actually shooting. What was the projectiles like? Well, these do change also in history. What amazes me is the bow wood, including the arrows, all have to be made by hand with nothing more than flint tools. And that is quite an amazing thing. We may do a video in the future showing how bows and arrows are made uh, and that would be quite a good video because we have the uh, a selection of tools that we use to demonstrate how this is done but that's a, a, a video in its own right. As we always say we try to keep these videos to about 15 minutes long. Anyway what I've got here is one of the earlier arrows and what you would need is the straightest stick that you can find, first of all, and that can be broken or cut off using flint. Then you need to straighten it to a certain degree. It's very rare to get an unbelievably straight stick. And the best way of straightening it is to actually hold it over a fire and then slowly manipulate the wood until it's pretty straight. We also have another one of our many artifacts, a tool that we use to actually rub along the arrow and that creates something that's a little bit more smooth and that's important because you want the arrow to fly in relatively a straight line so you can actually hit what you're trying to hit talking about uh, traveling in a straight line something that helps immensely has to be adding flights to the arrow and as you can see we've got some flights added there they've been glued on so you can use once again uh, uh, fish scale glue rabbit fur glue or even tree sap which you actually see here in here the dark it's tree sap uh, and it's actually tied on with cordage as well and that's important because it really holds the thing together we've got a nook which is nothing more than cut uh, a, a, a v cut into the woodwork at the end there and that's been cut in once again with flint because remember there is no metal on these and then the head is actually quite an important bit because that usually gives you an idea of how old the actual arrow is early arrowheads were generally uh, basic if i told you to all go away and draw an arrowhead you would draw it pretty much like that uh, and it's basically a long cutting edge and this that is enough to really go through even the thickest fur of a woolly mammoth it wouldn't bring it down in one but several of these could bring it down um, the only problem with these is they do have a habit of sliding out uh, if the animal started to run away, for example. Um, so over time, as you can imagine, what I'm going to be talking about next is they slowly develop a barbed arrow. And what I've got to show you here is actually a Bronze Age arrow. So you can see how by the end of the Stone Age, when we start using metal, um, we change our tactics again. And this is our Bronze Age arrow. So once again, 
we will start at this end we've got the nook cut into it just to there we've also got a large amount of tree sap there uh, supporting that nook as you saw with the other one we've got feathers that have been glued and tied on and once again you can see the blacking there is the tree sap now by the bronze age the arrowheads have changed slightly and there we have a fantastic barbed quite a detailed quite a intricately made barbed arrowhead and these are the next step up really because they realize that having a barb on the arrow it won't come out easily and even when we look at medieval arrows later on barbed arrows are really designed to stay in and they do actually stay in quite well actually uh, but you've still got these very sharp cutting edges so archery was done as i said for war use so you could use it against a foe maybe a different tribe in the stone age or even in the bronze age but it's predominantly being used for hunting and this would be any form of animal life to a certain degree and also fish we also know uh, that fish um uh, archery or, or fishing with bows and arrows was also carried out it's something that's done in uh, in a number of um, tribes across the world even today really archery uh, and fishing with archery but like I said there is evidence of these flat bows and these arrows across Britain and uh, a good book like I said is the archaeology of archery that has some beautiful illustrations in it of not just the bows itself including bows with decoration there we go there's the bows with the sinew decoration on it um, but we also have on here or in here uh, a selection of arrows when I can find them. I probably won't be able to find them. There we go. We found some uh, a selection of arrow heads just to there. We must not forget that even though we're into the Bronze Age when it comes to arrows like this, you would expect metal to be used. But what is really fascinating, and this is what I find really fascinating about the Bronze Age, is even though the bronze is in, and also copper, which we must not forget, copper was around before bronze was created by uh, mixing uh, copper and tin together, um, a flint was still being used. Flint was used for a very, very long period of time. And that's really down to the fact that people believe that if it's not broken, don't fix it. So instead of using bronze, which is a very expensive metal very hard to make you need someone that knows the correct way of putting tin and copper together um, it is straightforward in the bronze age to just use flint steel and like I said flint was used for a lot of things even into the bronze age but as I said these items are copied and they're copied really from two sources we've got the Amesbury archer which is uh, worth having a look at uh, if you get a chance which was a bronze age man that was found buried with n a large amount of artifacts uh, including arrow uh, arrows uh, and then we've also got in Somerset um, uh, some some archery equipment including a bow that was also found there in the Somerset levels in the peat layer so it's beautifully preserved and that's wood being preserved by the peat so we have got evidence for this but like I said in the Stone Age in the Bronze Age these bows were more used for hunting than warfare what I will do in the future is do a video on the short bow and I'll also do a video on the long bow. And obviously the thing about the long bow specifically, also the short bow to a certain degree, it was more of a military weapon than a hunting weapon by that time, really. Anyway, on that note, uh, make sure you subscribe, make sure you comment, let us know what sort of videos that you would like to see. But like I said, this has been a brief introduction to the start of archery back in the Stone Age and into the Bronze Age. More importantly, in the Bronze Age than the Stone Age. Anyway, on that note, stay safe, stay in, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.